Oh, we're going to move on very quickly, you know, into a different conversation. We're still talking on relationships this morning. And our conversation this morning is on third party in relationships. This one, <laughs> this one is always very... <laughs> Basketballs. You know, we mentioned something um, about prioritizing and all of that in the last conversation that we just had. And then we're talking about what would you do if you have a conversation of your mom and then your wife and then your partner and all of that. And then you talked about now that, they've, that your wife is your nuclear family, you have to prioritize them. It means, generally, it means that you're expelling the third party yeah. out of it. Yeah. Like you don't, you are focusing on you and I because actually that's where the focus should be. Uh, three is a crowd. Yes. That's what they said. <laughs> so, I mean, why are you allowing other people have input yeah. into your conversation? Why are you letting, why are you letting other people's ideas um, trample with yours? Because the truth is they are also doing their own thing. Yeah. In their own homes. Yeah. Yeah. And they won't let your own ideas trample with theirs. So why are you letting theirs yeah. do yours? You know, I also find this third party thing um, interesting um, in terms of um, so, you know, two people are dating and then one has this friend, this long, this childhood friend, for instance, that they just, you know, that, you know, they, they just can't do a way that, you know, that's, that's always been there and mm. always be there. So, you know, and then, you know, now you're in a relationship and you have to deal with your partner's very, you know, close friend that's a bit too close. You know, that's probably always in the house, probably usually always third wheeling, you know, and, you know, and then if, you know, and then usually it's very interesting, for instance, if it's now someone from opposite sex. So, you know, let's say, for instance, I, you know, I and a woman and we're in a relationship and she has a, a male best friend, a male best friend <laughs> that she really holds very dear to her yes. heart. Um, <laughs> you know, and they're very close He's always around. She's always telling me. She tells him everything about even us and about me. You know. So I don't know. It's it's that is those kind of third parties. I find them very very interesting. So we have a tweet um from Gold Olufadi Shakira this morning, and she was actually you know she 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 started this thread, very long thread on Twitter. You know, talking about third party in relationships. And the, the first slide reads, that a person is married doesn't mean some people won't still find them attractive. The gene for attraction doesn't automatically switch off when there's a spouse in the picture. There are actually some humans of destruction that go out of their way to prey on married men. That is Lagos for you. And women because there's no commitment involved. What I'm saying, in essence, is that it is left for you, the married person, to respect the relationship you have with your spouse. The outsider has no such commitment to your partner, and they really don't care. I have been out several times with my husband, T. Jarius, and I, took on in, um, I, took, I look on in amusement when some had given him the green light. Even with my rings on, some still want to toast me. Lol. Babe, Lomo. <laughs> Sometimes we invite the third party all by ourselves. You have a relationship with a friend and emotions start getting in the way. You, decide, you deceive yourself by saying it's nothing and you keep moving closer. You then start to see the missing 20% that your partner lacks. Oh, see how Tony listens to me, always goes out of his way to help me. Larry doesn't even put me first. Before you know it, your spouse no longer excites you. All you're looking forward to is when Sunday will come to town again. The phone rings and you're checking the caller ID to see if it is Sunday. And you roll your eyes when you see, <laughs> this is Larry. Careful, sister, that handshake is going past the elbow. There's a Yoruba adage that says, which means what you have no intention of eating, don't even smell it, lest you get tempted. Humans are emotional beings and sometimes these emotions make us misbehave if we don't put them in check. Another adage says, which means if they're deceiving you, don't deceive yourself. Most recognize when the feelings start to come up, but deny it vehemently to themselves till they're in too deep. At some time in a relationship, especially marriage, see finish may enter the equation. And that is when you start to see all the shortcomings of your spouse. She doesn't even bend it like Becca. 
She <laughs> he's not even romantic. She likes tying rapper. When you get to this point, you have to remind yourself all of the things that endeared him or her to you and work on your relationship by communicating with each other effectively. It is not by seeking solace out there as that only gives temporary relief. Again, there are different kinds of relationships. Some are married but are in an open relationship or they are allowed to bring other partners into the relationship. Nothing somebody will not see. Hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. So this is a very interesting one. In yeah. fact, for the third part in the relationship that we're talking about, it's not just about friendships. Now we're talking about outsiders. Yeah. We're, we're talking about people that your other partner doesn't even know. People that mm. you're now paying attention to because yeah. your partner is not uh, making up that 20% that you need yeah. and all of that. And this happens a lot when there's a conflict between partners. Yeah. Like, you know, you and I, we had an argument. It's very serious. We're not talking to each other. And then for some reason, Tunde is very nice to you. Yeah. Tunde is sweet. Then you start to see Tunde. And uh, every day, Tunde and you are talking. Yeah. And you're always laughing. Yeah. And Tunde is taking you out just to make you feel better. Be careful. Yeah. Tunde probably doesn't have the right intentions. Yes. Tunde is probably. not your husband. Yes. Yes. Tunde is not your husband. So, yes. so I mean, go and sort your relationship with your husband yeah. and make it work. So, we're not going to be having this conversation alone this morning on third party in a relationship. We have a friend. In fact, why did I say a? We have these two wonderful friends <laughs> of the house. It's yes. been a minute that I've spoken to them and I'm so excited that they're joining us via um, phone call this morning. I'm talking about Abiola and Solomon Oye Kunle. They are life coaches and of course they will be joining us this conversation with myself. Solomon and Abiola Oyekule have been married for over 13 years and blessed with four children. Solomon is a business solutions consultant and Abiola is a seasoned banker, the author of the book Raising Godly Children and convener of Parents Raising Godly Children Community. They are both total family life coaches and they advocate who love to counsel and guide couples in matters relating to relationships and raising children. Good morning, Abiola and Solomon. Thank you for joining us this morning. How are you doing? Hello, good morning. You're actually yeah. Okay. We've okay, not sure been able here. to join us, so we are going to continue with the conversation and try to reach them back because okay. I'd really like us to converse with them and yeah. you know, break down the um, topic third this party. morning, third party in a relationship. I want to know what you can do, how you can make it work because, I mean, it is almost impossible for people not to find you attractive. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's it. It's almost impossible for people not to find you attractive and all of that. So, you know, it's just very important yeah. that you know how to go about it. And they are already experienced. They've been married for 13 years okay. with children. So they would, I, like, I want to know how they've been able to weather yeah. that storm. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not easy. Exactly. It's not exactly. easy. <laughs> but they joined us back. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good Hi, morning. Hi, good morning. Yes. Hello, good morning. Ah, Abiola and Solomon, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have you this morning. How are you doing? I hope you're keeping safe. Yes, the baby. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. All right, so the conversation this morning is on third party in relationships. And okay. I mean... A lot of people are going through a lot currently in their relationships mm. and uh, we want to see how we can help them with your wealth of um, experience. So let's start mm. from the top. Let's break it down. I'm, I'm speaking to Abiola now. Abiola, mm. what do you think third party in relationships actually mean? Please, can you take that again? Hear me. Okay. Can you hear me, Abiola? Yes. All right. So, what do you think third party in relationships mean? Okay. All right. So, I actually turned down something here about who a third party in a relationship is. Okay. So, is that person who consciously or unconsciously 
deliberately or unknowingly. You might want to note that all this, all right, who consciously or unconsciously, deliberately or unknowingly interfere in a love relationship and is usually motivated to maintain his or her own self-esteem or manage emotions of fear, frustration, anger, or guilt. So this is somebody coming into some couple's love relationship interfering, and it could be, you know, like, like what was stated here, consciously or unconsciously. So there's some people that by what they are doing, they are actually unconsciously impacting on a couple's love relationship. So the owner is on the couple to really understand that, okay, this if there's, an, if there's an external influence, being able to design and being able to, you know, um, being conscious of that and being intentional about understanding if there's something external, you know, influencing and impacting on my love relationship. So this third person is that person who is actually being motivated, is having this, Influence based on, you know, trying to maintain his own self esteem by influencing, interfering in this um, love relationship or trying to manage their own emotions. So he's pouring his own emotions of fear, anger, frustration, you know, lack of self esteem, or probably, you know, trying to hold on to somebody who is not your, okay, and then uh, you're, you're, you're doing all of that and it's impacting on this relationship. So that's who I would call. You know, it's not part in a relationship. Do you have anything to add to what she has just said? Sorry, what did you say? Um, Solomon, do you have anything to, ha to add to what um, Bella has just said? Okay, so basically, like she said, uh, the, the influence of a third party can be intentional, like deliberate, and it can be unconscious, you know, but... Uh, a third party is just someone that is not uh, is not in that space, but have influence on that space. So, so basically, that is how I would define a third party. He's not in that space of that relationship, but he has influence on what happens within that space. Hey, all right, thank you very much for that, Solomon. So what would you say is the best way to handle third parties in relationships? What is the best way to deal with them? All right, so uh, the, the first thing we have to look at is I've just defined two, two uh, positions now. There is a space and there is uh, uh, out of the space, right? So in handling third party relationships, you have to agree, the people in the space have to agree on how to deal with third party. It, it, it's a combined effort. It's a combined effort between the two of you. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. You will have, you have third party in your relationship, but you have to agree on your baseline. You have to agree on your values, and you have to agree on when and when it's not, um, how like for the one and when you shouldn't allow this influence to come in. Not mm -hmm. every issue you allow it for that. Okay. All right. So is is there does there have to be um you know, a form of conversation between the couple. And um, Abiola, this would be for, this question is for you, please. Does there have to be a form of conversation between the couple, uh, between the couple, you know, in addressing a third party or when a third party comes into the play? Okay, when um, do you have to uh, discuss the conversation? I would say, like I'm at all right, right from when you're prospecting. Okay, courtship when you're when you're prospecting, so you know I'm a third person. So you know before you enter a relationship, there's a prospecting. All right, there there is the, the wooing part of the um, the wooing stage where this guy is kind this babe and saying, oh, okay, I like her, and she's also you know accepting him. Is this somebody I really want to be in a relationship with? And at that point where you agree to you don't come together in a relationship and you're also determining the level at which you want to go into this relationship, the level of commitment. 
that you want to do. That is when this conversation can happen. Because they could be these um the third party is a major influence, you know, influencer of any relationship. So you need to determine right from that time. Like I tell people courtship is a time for discussion, for talking, for communication. You know, you talk about your vision, you talk about a whole lot of things. It's not a time to start getting into some other kind of things that, you know, will not eventually impact on what this relationship is evolving to be or what you're looking to get out of this relationship. So right from the onset, you need to set the boundaries, you need to determine, okay, what what powers are we willing to grant over to talk parties, what are the things that are off limits of discussions, the things like for me and my husband, we are decided right early on time, you know, you don't we don't discuss us, you know, as how there's, there's, there's so much I can, I know my boundaries in discussing my husband with my siblings, for instance. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right? Even if they don't have, they don't have any intention of being, you know, a bad influence, but really, there are some things that you just keep within your relationship and all of that. So you determine right from that time, and if you're already in a relationship and that has not happened, today is a good day to have that conversation, all right, to say, Okay. Okay. So what then happens? What then happens when um, you know uncalled for feelings starts to spring up for a mm. third party? Now I'm talking about maybe you know an old friend that uh, you somehow just connected with, maybe because there was a conflict between you and your husband and all of that, and then emotions start to erupt because, you know, this person is kind of feeling that space or checking 20% of the things that your husband or your wife is not checking at that moment. How then do you deal with it? Do you advise that a conversation is had between you and um, your partner or you just, you know, shove it aside and then you, and then probably become something else later on? So, can you take the question again? Not, not clear. Not clear. Can you can you hear me? Yes, yes. Can you can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay, so the question is, what happens when there is an emotion for somebody else other than your spouse? That is the third party. And the third party in this question is maybe an old friend that you've connected with, and then this person checks the 20% that um, your partner is not checking at the moment. How do you deal with it? Okay, um... If I got you correctly, there uh, is an uh, emotional connection. Uh, maybe is this like an old flame? Um, somebody you had dated before, now you're reconnecting with. Did I get that right? Is that what you're trying to say? And that also comes on the scene. Hello? How do Hello. you deal with it? Yes. Okay, that, that's what you're trying to say. Yes. Okay, how do you deal? See? I think one of the first things that must happen immediately is to open up to your spouse, I mean, your, your partner. Mm. All right? All right. So happens, it does happen. Hello? Yes, I yes. can hear you. Okay. Yeah, because it does happen. Like, for instance, my husband and I, one of the things we also agree. Okay, are you saying something else? Should I continue? Yes, please go on. Yes, please go on. We're okay. here. One of the things that we have to talk about also, okay. you know, very early on in our relationship was the fact that, see, you won't always be attracted to me. I mm. won't always be attracted to you. And that is a reality in every relationship. Okay. There are times that you, just, you are not just feeling that, you know, that thing. And then somehow you, you find yourself being attracted to other people. It happens at every stage of relationship, even in marriages. Mm. But you know what? Mm. You always say the same. Okay? In this level of openness, this ability to quickly call your spouse at home, you know, you know, this person I used to say, because um, sin thrives in darkness in secrecy. So when you have that level of communication openness and, um, you know, you told yourself that there are not going to be any secrets, Mm. And uh, what you will find out that would happen almost immediately is that fifty percent of you falling into that temptation is the chances is taken up because you are already opened about it, mm. spoken about it. 
So it's very, very key. Yeah, and old flames came, you know, comes along, and then you are beginning to feel this. But before your call, your partner almost immediately, and because you already have an understanding, okay, I'm assuming you have an understanding that, okay, I, I can be give open to you. I know that there are relationships that you might not have that level of openness, but then you also see that there's, an, there's a problem, you know, that you need to deal with, because to help one and each other from falling into this kind of things and influences, there has to be a, a good level of openness and vulnerability. Vulnerable, I must be able to be naked and not be ashamed with my partner. Okay, I'm happy this feeling. I'm about you know, you know, I like this girl. This thing is good, and I'm able to tell my partner. I will help each other through this. I think that's the key thing. I don't know if um, that's. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So, Alman, do you want to add something to what she has just said? Sorry, okay. So, uh, you know, uh, she mentioned vulnerability. She mentioned yes. openness. Uh, how do you deal with those things? How do you deal with someone that you have emotions with, trying to influence? Yes. And for, for, for the guys, for the men, their parents, their mom, their mm. mom, their Things have this subtle, subtle uh, influence. You understand? Yes. So, so you, you have to, as a man, understand what your priorities are. Okay. I, if we have time, I can just think it's not just a, a case in point where I was in the family meeting and I was asked to call my mom for, on an issue, and unknowing to me, I called my wife. Then we're going to marry. I was asking my sisters, and you go, I wanted to call mommy. I called Yola, and they were like, hey, Yola has gotten into your head. You Ask <laughs> <laughs> kids. <laughs> so I now asked my sisters, I said, will you pray for you to get into your husband's head? In such a way that he will just be thinking about you at all times. They said, yes, now that's the best, that's the way I went. Oh, I said, oh, so you want to do that? To beat up your husband, and you don't want my own wife to beat up to me. And mm. so that, that just feel me at that point, and they now know my hand towards my wife. You understand? So, in not so confrontational way, I've been able to undo that place that you don't come into this space and start to put thoughts in my head. Do, do you understand? Okay. Yeah. Okay. In, in fact, I mean, that's a very yes, nice yeah. one. I, like, the <laughs> angle that you brought it from is yeah. even interesting. So before I let you guys go this morning, I'd like you to advise couples on how to actually keep sparks alive in their relationship. How can they, you know, make it happen and uh, maintain a cordial relationship with themselves and also an interesting one because at some point, some people say that relationships get boring mm. and repetitive because you're with one person all the time and then you don't know what to do and then there is see finish that word. Like, yeah. okay, you've seen this person inside and out. You already know how they are. So why should I still remain with them? So I'd like his advice for on how they can actually keep um, the sparks going on fine, even after they've had children. Oh, oh, oh all right. So you say, okay, now, uh, to the, on the lighter note now, we, we always have that, uh, we always hear that uh, conversation that uh, I can't keep the I'm all the time. You know, I have to be able to say that fine. You know, so, so the truth about it is, if you look at the content of all of this, Afan Amala, is the same thought in different dimensions. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you are eating rice, you are eating carbohydrates. You are eating uh, yam, you are eating carbohydrates. True. You are eating zebra, you are eating carbohydrates. You, you are taking the same carbohydrates, but in different flavors, in different dimensions. So you have to look at your marriage also as that, and mm. try to create... Different version. My wife did something some few days ago. She just came out to the kitchen in some, let me use what, crazy hot pants. And I was like, I was just like, <laughs> you know, it was a side of her I've not seen before. Really? You know, it was a side of her I've not seen before. And, and that is having a conscious effort to recite the way you dish the rice and mm -hmm. touch the coconut rice, the same rice, the fried rice. The 
same right to, you know, like that. Mm. That's, and that's, that's actually too boring. That's, that's a lovely. I hope that yeah. Yes, yes, you yes are. in fact, like, <laughs> that's, that's so interesting. Of your allow what do you have to say? Okay, um, well, like what you just said, you just have to be spontaneous. Okay. Mm. You know, and you must have this, um, I really want to make this work. And not just work, I want to have fun all the way, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, for, for, for a long time, because we have four kids, you know, we've not gone away by ourselves. You know, anytime we have to be to do something, we're always, you know, doing it as a family and all of that. And then this January, we decided mm-hmm. that we were going to, that we're going to just go, you know, for a weekend, get away. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, before we went, you know, like what you said, that sometimes the relationship gets boring. Mm-hmm. It, 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 we're actually at that point, really, you know. <laughs> I guess, you know, not grumpy, we're not, then we have a very stressful December. So, mm. we're just, so it was, I was happy that we're going, you know, we're not communicating no. very well, but we had made up our mind that we will face, you know, even with whatever it is, we're going to have this getaway. And by the time, the first day, you know, the, you know we're just, and by the time we're coming back, it was a totally different ah, you know, okay. um, relationship. It was like a renewal. So, you know, we just have to be conscious in a relationship, want to make it work, and want to have fun with it, you know, while at it. You know, for me, last year, I, I, I decided to do some way. So, you know, it, it's conscious. It, it's something both parties must really want to make to have fun, you know. Mm. I want to say major thank you, Abiola and Solomon, for thank joining us this much. morning. In fact, yeah. I love that you've been able to break down a couple of things for us and also share some of your experiences with each other. You know, sometimes we learn from other people's experiences yeah. and how they've been able to make it work. And thank you for also sharing your truth. So it, it has been amazing. Indeed. And thank you for being a very good friend to Tea or Coffee. You are always coming <laughs> we through for us. We appreciate you very much. We appreciate you and we love you. Have yourself a fantastic day. And of course, please try and stay safe. Yes, Bye. Indeed. Bye. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It is always a delight yes. to have Abiola and Solomon on yeah. set. Or I love what he said about when we were talking about spicing things up and spontaneity, that you can have rice in different shapes and forms. Same way you. you can have carbohydrates in form of Amala, in front of Eba, in front of Semo. So, you know, it just really depends. And, you know, Abiola said something also very important that, you know, it's really, you need to have the mindset of, I want to make this work. Mm. So, you know, when you're dealing with a third party in a relationship, if you have the mindset of, I want to make things work, as we've also earlier said on the show, you know, you prioritize, you prioritize what is actually important, you know, is it this third party or your partner? And if you want to make it work, you will always pick your partner. I like that they really shared their yeah. own experiences and, you know, how they've been able to weather a lot of storms. Yeah. And, I mean, I like that they're being truthful because, you know, it is almost impossible for you not to have third parties. Yeah. They would come either consciously or unconsciously. Yes. Now, you would determine how that affects your relationship. And another thing is, if you are having attractions for other people, it is very healthy for you to converse with your partner. You will just know how to put yeah. it forward. That, okay, so, hmm, see, you see that man <laughs> that is living down that street or yeah. something. I think something is happening and all of that. And let your partner know what's happening so you don't get into unnecessary trouble and then you're trying to hide, yeah. you're being blackmailed. A lot of things happen to people and they could have nipped it in the bud when it happened. If, if anything happens, your, your husband already knows that you have told him mm. that, okay, so I'm not feeling comfortable with the fact that I'm really having emotions for this guy. Yeah. And he's like, why? He might be upset, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, look at me now, yeah. as in fine bubble yeah. for you. And then you're feeling this, I'm sorry. And then they can make you work. Yeah. And sometimes, um, some people actually advise a couple should take therapy together. Mm. Let's talk about what it is that mm. is happening. Let's talk about why we're, we're, yeah. we're facing difficulties and all of that, you know, it is a partnership. Yes. So it has to work. Yeah. And if you have the mindset that it should work day in, day out, you work on things 
that we will make it work yeah. and then it becomes progressive. It's not easy. Yeah, exactly. And it's easier said than done. Exactly. But conversations always make things better. Yeah, communication is always, you know, at the roots of making a relationship actually work. And, com you know, it's not just communication as in, you know, good morning, good good evening. Uh, what have you no, eaten? Yes. Have but you communication, eaten? Yeah, but communication in terms of, you know, you're able to tell the truth no matter what. You're able to, you understand even when your partner is not speaking, you understand what they are saying. That is deep and true communication in a relationship.